Hi there, I really wanted to do a super quick video on Godot's new, or Godot 3.5's new navigation. Um, so I'm just going to quickly run through that and hopefully you'll enjoy this. So I'm just starting with a standard basic scene. I've just fast forwarded this so you don't have to watch me uh, do something that you already know. I'm just creating a few um, mesh instances. I'm going to make one of these mesh instances nice and big for the ground. And then I'm going to duplicate and make um, a bunch of mesh instances that are going to be uh, used for the walls. Um, I'm just going to position these around the scene uh, so that we're going to have to bake the navigation mesh out once we get uh, done with this. So it's pretty simple, um, just dragging them around and moving them about as long as they kind of like are approximately uh, something that you can test. This is uh, doesn't have to be exactly like this, but something like this, just so that you can uh, write some code and uh, get this basically working. I also make a camera, because I want to be able to see it, and I just set the camera to uh, match my current transform so that I can um, view it from a nice position. And this is kind of where the magic happens. Um, what we're going to add now is this um, magical navigation mesh instance. So I've saved my scene, obviously I nearly forgot. Um, but we're going to add this navigation mesh instance scene. So we don't need the navigation top level thing anymore. I'm just going to select everything that's uh, the geometry and I'm just going to put that on as a child of this navigation mesh instance. The navigation mesh instance has um, you have to create this navigation mesh instance and then you can bake the nav mesh and you'll see um, from that um, bake nav mesh in the top of the, the 3D view there you can see it. I've created this blue navigation mesh that matches the uh, geometry on my map. Next I'm going to add my uh, basic player so this is just going to be um, a kinematic body. I'm going to rename this to a uh, unit. Just imagine that this is an RTS unit and uh, I'm just going to add some geometry so I can actually see it. So it's just another mesh instance. Um, this time it'll be a capsule um, and I just want to try and rotate this around so that um, so that it's sort of like upwards, uh, so it looks like a kind of like a, a player capsule. So just rotate this round and um, drag it above the ground. It's a little bit big though. So I'll um, just uh, uh, transform this a little bit, so it's a little bit too big, so I'll just um, change this up um, a little bit so that it looks a little bit um, better matched to uh, the map that I've got set up right now. Uh, the last thing I'm adding is just a collision shape. Um, I'm going to try and uh, stuff around with this collision shape just to try and get this to match a little bit. So the collision shape doesn't have anything to do with the um, navigation, but uh, it just help to um, make things a bit more normal. It's likely you'll have one anyway in your scene. The next important thing is to add the the magical thing. So this is the new uh, the new part of this. This is a navigation agent. So by adding this navigation agent, um, I'm just going to rename this navigation agent actually. So I'll just click on that and rename it again. So I'll name it agent. Um, by adding this, this gives us all the power of the new navigation agent to be able to find its way around my map. So I'm just going to add a script to my top level uh, unit. Um, just add that script. I'm going to make sure it's a, a called unit and it's a completely um, empty one because I don't want to have to delete that anyway and just create that script and we'll get ready to write some code just make this a little bit bigger um, so that you guys can see it a little bit easier and then we'll start um, writing the magic code that we need in order to make this navigation agent work. So first up let's just get um, a reference to that agent so um, on ready var agent equals um, I'm going to make sure that I uh, set the type as navigation um, navigation agent so that I get code completion and then I'm just going to find that agent. Um, then inside the ready we're just going to have to set the destination of that. Um, some of the cool stuff that you can see um, is if you just control click on navigation agent you see some of the uh, the awesome new stuff that you get and one we're looking for right now is this um, set target location and that's basically all you need to do. Next, so we'll just do this agent dot set target location. Uh, right now we'll just set it to vector 3.0 so that it's just going to the center of the world. Now under the physics process, this is where we just need to calculate what the velocity that we 
like to go um, at um, is and uh, you can do that by finding out what the next position in your um, in your path is and you can do this much easier than previously so I've created a variable called next and it's called uh, agent.getNextLocation in order to work out the velocity this is the only complicated bit um, so we just work out what the next location is minus the current position of the um, of the unit uh, with the transform.origin I'm going to normalize that so that it's a unit vector and then multiply it by speed and by delta so that we uh, move um, in that direction and then it's just as simple as calling move and collide um, with that new velocity which should be uh, sending us in the direction that we need to go um, when I tested this, uh, I saw that it was uh, almost straight away, and I think that's just because the speed is too high. So I uh, dropped that down to 10 and try again. You can see that it moves in the direction that it needs to go um, from where it is to the next location in the path, and it's uh, obviously straight. If you move it across to another side, it should, in theory, still be able to calculate its path, um, which is kind of cool. So it just finds each of the the next locations in the path and um, calculates the velocity and then moves in that direction to get there. It'd be much better if this um, was like an export var so um, I'm just going to make the speed um, variables and export var speed equals and I'm going to change it to 5 because it's still a bit fast and then we'll just um, use that speed variable down here instead of the hard-coded value of, uh, of 10 so now we do this it should move a little bit slower along the path until it gets to its destination. So we're just going to add a target as well, it's a little bit unrealistic to be moving to the centre of the world so I'm just adding another uh, mesh instance that this time is going to be a sphere. Um, I'm going to call it target and uh, give it the uh, mesh instance of a sphere and just change its radius a little bit so that it's uh, not too massive. And then I'll position it somewhere um, on my scene. Um, just have to change the script slightly once this is done um, in order to make sure that um, that the target is the uh, that the script knows what the target is, or that the unit knows what the target is. So just uh, jumping into the script, one of the easiest ways to do this is if we just do an on ready var uh, target, and uh, we just do a node, and we can just drag the node that we want from on the um, the hierarchy over there into into that uh, on ready variable and then inside of the set target we'll just say target.transform.origin and uh, it should move um, straight to the target every time so if I move this uh, sphere somewhere else and hit play again it should um, just move to the target every time so that's a pretty simple way of doing that also just going to look at some of the amazing signals that you can have in here so one of the coolest signals is the destination already reached so um, we're going to hook up the signal. So if you just click on the agent and go to node over there, um, you see this um, uh, navigation finished signal. We're just going to um, connect this up to the script that we've just got. So it's pretty cool because um, um, you can do whatever you want at this point here. So we just hook up the signal and uh, just print out a statement saying we got there for now. Um, and you can do whatever you want when you get here. And we'll just quickly test this to make sure this works as well. So when we run this, we should see um, down the uh, left hand side in the console when the navigation agent gets to the location that it needs to get to it pops up with a message as it does there. And the last little thing that we're going to look at is just uh, mostly used for the um, obstacle avoidance so uh, with this one this is on agent velocity computed and I've just hooked up again this event now the key thing here is that you need to have your obstacle avoidance um, all set up so that tick box there for obstacle avoidance and all I'm going to do is um, it, it generates a safe velocity so that it knows that if there's anything moving around inside the uh, world it's going to calculate the safe velocity and then only allow you to move in that safe velocity. So we don't need to move and collide inside of the physics process, but what we do need to do is set the velocity for the agent and then uh, leave it up to the agent to calculate. So uh, it will fire the on agent velocity computed and then you can move and collide with the safe velocity. And uh, this only really works, as I mentioned before, when you're working with the um, the obstacle avoidance system within uh, the navigation pathfinding. So there we have it, a lightning tour of Godot 3.5's new navigation agent node and how to use it. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you next time.